welcome back guys. So as a few of you may have seen from my other videos, I am really taking an interest in doing more urban sketching. So, you know, drawing objects around the house whenever I get a chance um, and taking my watercolors and sketchbook with me when I'm out and about and trying to do sketches whenever I can. Um, also, you know, during the week we're inside in front of our computers or at our desk most of the time. So I really need to sort of touch base with fresh air <laughs> at least once a week and so we've you know grab the kids we pack a lunch and we um, go to a park and hang out for a couple of hours maybe traveling out of the city um, into the redwoods and spending the day at a state park um, just hanging out by the water relaxing drawing reading uh, that kind of stuff just to get away from city life for a little bit So the only problem I'm really running into when I'm out sketching is that I don't know that I have the right colors for the things that I want to paint. And I was taking a little palette with me that had about 12 colors in it and um, I would just sort of grab them before I left and not really knowing what I'm grabbing and hoping that it works out. And recently we went on a little um, trip with the family uh, for a couple of days and I took my kit and I, I didn't have the colors that I needed so I really wanted to explore all the colors that I own and try and create some little palettes or even a single palette that contained most of the colors or all the colors that I could possibly need or colors to mix colors that I need. So as you can see here, I'm just filling up some full pans with um, a little bit of paint from each of the tubes that I don't already have a full pan of. And um, actually one of my viewers asked this question, why don't I fill the pans up completely? And I guess it's just because I'm a bit of a weirdo and I, <laughs> I like having the big pans because I like to be able to put my brush in there and not mash it into like a half pan. But I don't like filling it up all the way because I just, I guess I have a fear of commitment and I just don't want to fill that whole pan up with the paint that I might not use a lot of and I'd rather keep it safe in the tube and um, so that's one reason and the other reason is that I kind of like to make multiple palettes and so I might fill a couple of full pans a little bit of, with a little bit of paint and then I can put it in different palettes. So here's my entire watercolor collection. I have a bunch of sort of open stock paints, which are the White Knights, the Van Gogh, Schmincke, Winsor & Newton, some Jacksons, I think. I have two full sets of watercolors, which are the Marie's 18 set, uh, which are a really reasonably priced sort of entry level watercolor set. Um, the only problem with them is they don't dry so well in pans. They really dry out and sort of crack. But there's no problem rewetting them, they rewet really easily, so they're still fine to take on the go. Um, but just to keep that in mind, they're better used straight out of the tube. And then I have the Turner's Artist watercolor set, um, I think which is an 18 as well. Yeah, so those are the colors I'm going to swatch today, and I'll finally be able to see all the colors I have in my collection.
So here are all my watercolors swatched out. I tried to kind of put them in rainbow order, but I kind of messed up. <laughs> Even after swatching a bunch, you know, little swatches to see where what went where. This Naples yellow, I think, should probably be down in here with the more ochre yellows. Um, it kind of looks wacky up there, but you know what? I'm gonna get more watercolors in the future and they won't be in order either. So this is a good start. I just wanted to be able to see kind of in one glance all of the colors that I own and be able to grab a good cross section of colors to be able to mix other ones. So there's this one big chart here and then there's a couple of stragglers on the end here on another chart because I didn't have room, which are um, kind of the ones that have white mixed in with them. So the Van Gogh and White Knights sort of, I mean, I guess they're not pastel, but they're just a bit more opaque and uh, not sort of pure pigments. They definitely have some white in there. So I just sort of started a new sheet with those. And as I get new paints, I'll just add them to this here and be able to see them all together. So as far as putting together this palette, I think because it's my first time round, I'm going to just kind of not do it too technically and kind of go with my gut a little bit and just grab the colors first off that I know that I use a lot of and that I feel comfortable using and like using. And then I'm going to maybe fill in the gaps where I think I might need, you know, if I'm missing a cool red or a warm red or if I'm missing um, sort of a turquoise or something like that that will help me mix other colors. And then I'll just sort of fill it in around that. So as for the actual palette, I just jumped on Amazon and looked for empty palettes on there. And I wanted, I knew I wanted to get something that was um, a little bit bigger because it's not like I go hiking and uh, need less weight in my backpack or anything. I don't mind kind of having a bigger palette as long as it can kind of sit on my knee or next to me. Um, I'm totally fine with that. I want to have a lot of options and a lot of colors. And I think I'm going to start there and then maybe in the future sort of try out some limited palettes um, and see how that works. But I just want to get to know more of my colors and see what I gravitate towards um, and see what colors I actually use. And then I can trim it down from there. So I just went on Amazon, grabbed this guy. Um, I like to use full pans. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough space for a bunch of full pans. And I think this one holds um, maybe 24 or, or what I'm actually going to do is take this out. So I think I can fit 36 in here. And this, by the way, is pretty, you can see it's pretty crappily made. <laughs> um, this was like a $12 palette off Amazon. Um, not super cheap, but not super expensive either. I definitely think you can get better ones. I am just going to give this the toss because I tried putting pans in there and it is just so poorly made that it's impossible. And I like actually having um, the extra space to, to move around in here and not having to lock the, the actual pans down. So what I'm going to do is put full pans in here with little magnets on the back because this is a uh, tin so it's magnetic. Um, and this just has, you know, a threefold. I really liked this space because of the four different wells. So I think this is going to be great. And I wanted a lot of mixing space. I didn't want to have to bring a palette with me or anything. So again, that's why I kind of went for a bigger palette than um, I probably need, but <laughs> I wanted that space. And then this flap here, I'm not sure whether I'll keep this on. I think having a color chart because there's going to be so many paints in here um, attached to this part might be useful. I probably won't use it for mixing. I tend to just use this top part. But again, I'll put the link in the description if you guys want to check it out. It is definitely not a super high quality palette. It closes, has a little ring. It's pretty sturdy. Um, but you know, this is kind of flimsy here. You may be able to get a similar one on Jackson's maybe because um, their stuff is better quality, I find, than Amazon for a similar price. I haven't actually checked it out, but this was about, I think I got it for about $12. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go with that. And here's just a little bit of footage of me sort of grabbing some colors that I think I might want to put in my palette and just seeing them side by side and referring back to the, the color swatches that I just did. 
So I went back and forth a bunch of times with what colours to include. I knew that I definitely wanted to put a bunch of convenience greens in my palette because I found that when I had my other little palette I only had sort of one green and then I had the wrong yellows and blues to make the other greens that I wanted. So um, I'm making sure that I'm putting a bunch of greens in there and also some browns because I didn't really have those either and I tend to draw a lot of nature. Okay, so these are the final paints that I chose to go in this palette that I'm going to take out and about with me. Um, they're just little full pans that have magnets on the back uh, and they stick directly into this tray here. I took out the metal tray that holds all the pans just because it was kind of useless and I like this much better. As for the order that I put this in, I do not know what I was thinking. It's slightly chaotic. Um, <laughs> I think I thought because of the pattern on the bottom here, I was kind of doing this row here from the neutrals and then kind of ordering these guys in some kind of way, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, like these guys are in a weird shape and then we've got, you know, other colors over here. I don't know, I don't know you know with the greens and the blues but it made sense to me when I was putting it in there after I had swatched it I decided that it did not make much sense but anyway we're gonna go with it it's great it's done we're moving on um, okay so uh, the two light colors that I decided to include were the titanium buff or buff titanium depending on the brand and dunes um, so these are really great sort of neutral light colors I am, did not include a watercolor white. I think I will just take a tube of white gouache with me if I want to add white to anything. Uh, that seems to work the best rather than having a watercolor white. Um, I have a super bright permanent yellow here, um, the beautiful queen gold and Naples yellow. Why this is in the middle, I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> these two, so upon seeing these, these two are quite similar. So I don't know if I'll end up using both of them, but I just recently got this Naples yellow and I haven't really tried it out. So I definitely wanted to include it in the palette and just see whether I gravitate more towards Queen Gold or the Naples yellow, or if they are, you know, it is good to have both of them on the palette. I'm not sure. Um, the red, transparent red oxide, I don't tend to use a lot of either, but I feel like other palettes that I have kind of rushed together didn't have many of the earth colors and didn't have many browns in it. So I really wanted to make sure that I included some earthy browns in here. I have the Cypress Burnt Umber Deep and Burnt Umber. And these are similar I mean they're both umbers but or burnt umbers but this one is just really beautiful and deep it's very different to the burnt umbers so I feel like I will be using both of these uh, but we'll see maybe I needed to add maybe a yellow ochre or another sort of lighter toned brown I may regret that decision and switch it out for one one of these um, but this is what we're going to go with for now and we'll just try it out we have um, the English red deep the um, potter's pink and the perylene violet in these sort of red zones as well as the cadmium red light and the pyrrole red so we have a warm red here and then a cool red here so hopefully that helps me with mixing um the perylene violet is just delicious and there was no way that that was not going to go on my palette because it's just such a yummy color so um and i use a lot of that so i think that is a good addition um the mocha is another sort of white toned mix it's sort of a a pink brownish color. I'm not sure if I'll use a lot of it, but I just wanted to put it in to see whether I do or not. Um, we've got a really bright blue here with the blue sky, which is great for mixing. It's a little too bright to use as a sky by itself, but I have used the Marengo before for skies. This waters down really nicely to sort of like a grayish blue tone and it's just it's really nice actually and then adding a little bit of this blue sky in there you can have little pops of the blue um, within this gray and then the anthraquinone blue this is another new one that I got the same time as the Naples yellow um, I have not tried this out at all but I kind of put it in instead of an ultramarine blue just to see how it works and I think it will be a really good mixer it's a beautiful color so that's in there 
Um, we have the ocean blue, the viridian and the mint, which are these kind of tealish colors. I'm not sure if I need all three. Um, I mean, this is definitely a little more blue toned than the viridian. And the ocean blue is just a gorgeous color, again, by Roman Schmoll. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I put all three in here just because I had the room, but I don't know which one I'm going to sort of gravitate towards more, but we will find that out. Um, I've got a super vibrant mineral violet, and this separates out into a couple of different colors. It's a really interesting color, even though it looks very solid here. There is some nuance to it, which is really nice for shadow work, as well as this unpronounceable gray here. Um, of course, we have the beautiful Payne's gray, which is my favorite color. Uh, especially in Roman Schmal, it's a really beautiful color that flows and is just delightful to work with. Uh, we have a Luna Black, which is just in here because I don't have a neutral gray in here at all. So I'm not sure if I'll switch this out for a neutral gray, um, but I wanted the black in there just in case I wanted some pure dark color. So we will see how that works out and whether this is the right black. I don't know, but we'll give it a go. Um, then we have the greens, which I really wanted to make sure that I had in here because they always seem to be lacking the greens and the browns when I have built, you know, little mini palettes before. So we have this beautiful yellow green here, which is an olive green deep. We have the green earth, which is a very subtle sort of um, earthy green. Aquarius green, which is sort of a yellow, like a, a darker tone of this guy here. Um, and it's really beautiful. It's a nice deep green. Perylene green is also delicious. This one is really nice for sort of forest shadow work and undersea things. It's just such a beautiful color. And sap green is just a nice sort of vibrant green. So I think this is all of the colors. I do not know if this is going to work out. I don't know if I'm missing some. Um, this is not your answer to the perfect palette. I don't know how it's going to perform. <laughs> um, it may be a total fail. I may just use three colors out of here. I'm not sure, but I wanted to have my options open just for this first sort of exploration into building a palette. And then I'm going to sort of refine it as I go along and learn more about these colors and see which colors I really use. And if I need to switch something out, if I need more reds, if I need more browns, if I need more blues, who knows? So yeah, so this is just the start of it. Um, I think that's everything. So uh, yeah, so I think that kind of ends this swatching session and a look at the custom palette I'm building and exploring. And I will try and make some updates as I go along to see if anything is terrible in here or if anything is a revelation. Um, I'll try and keep you guys updated. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little journey and I will see you in the next one. Okay. Bye.